Hi, I'm Phil Keller from Metrolab. I'd like to tell you about a technique for measuring magnetic field strengths, one of the many techniques for measuring uh, magnetic field strengths, uh, called flux gates. Probably heard of that. Flux gates is a time-honored technique developed uh, in the 1930s, and that really came into their own during World War II for detecting submarines. As we can see from this classification of uh, all the different types of magnetic uh, field measurement techniques, where we classify them by uh, the range of uh, magnetic field uh, or magnetic field strengths on the bottom and the precision on the vertical axis, we can see that flux gates are really focused on low field measurements. So we're really talking about Earth's field and disturbances in the Earth's field. That's what we can measure with a flux gate. So let's take a look at how this technique works. A flux gate consists of three parts. There's a soft iron core, there's a drive coil, and there's a sense coil. The drive coil drives the soft iron core into saturation in the positive direction, back out of saturation, and into saturation in the negative direction. So it traverses the entire hysteresis loop. During all this, the sense coil measures the flux in the iron core. Now, as the iron goes into and out of saturation, the magnetic permeability uh, changes dramatically. When the iron is unsaturated, as we know, it has a very high permeability and it tends to draw external flux lines in. But as soon as it goes into saturation, the, there is no more room at the end, so to speak, and it pushes all that external flux out and, uh, and leaving only the flux generated by the drive coil. So here we see uh, what happens as we go through this hysteresis cycle. As we approach uh, the, the, the top, the saturation in the positive direction, all the external f uh, flux that is in the iron is driven out. And then as it desaturates, that process is reversed and all that uh, flux is sucked back in. And then the whole process is repeated once again when we get to the bottom of the hysteresis cycle as it reaches uh, the, the saturation point in the negative direction. The sense coil measures the inflow and outflow of the external flux as, a, as the iron goes into and out of saturation and therefore can measure the, the, the flux density of the external field. Now that's the basic idea, but to make a really good flux gate, there are lots and lots of details to manage. First of all, there's the iron itself. Its characteristics are key to the whole performance of the flux gate. The, uh, let's see, there's the softness, the temperature coefficient, the isotropy, and the stability. All these parameters have a direct influence on the final performance of the flux gate. Secondly, there's the geometry of the iron core. The sort of simple iron bar that we drew before is actually a very bad geometry because the sense coil picks up the whole uh, flux changes of the, that the, of the drive coil. A much better uh, geometry is shown right here. Here we have, we've split the drive coil into two parts. One that generates a field going to the right, say, and one that generates a field going to the left. And the sense coil wraps around all of that, and therefore the two components of, this, of the drive coil are canceled out. And the sense coil is only sensitive to that external field that is sucked in and pushed back out as the iron goes in and out of saturation. Now we see that we have a, a square and we've only used two sides of the square. We can use this, the other two sides of the square to make a, another sensor, a second flux gate sensor that is sensitive in the uh, orthogonal axis. And therefore, all of a sudden, we have a two-axis sensor. And we can make a three-axis sensor by superimposing something in the other direction. 
So as you can see, it's actually quite straightforward to make a multi-axis sensor. Synchronous detection is a technique that significantly improves the signal-to-noise ratio. We know that for every cycle of the drive voltage, we expect to see two measurement signals in the sense coil, once for the positive saturation and once for the negative saturation. We can therefore reject signals that don't occur at the right frequencies as being noise. Another important detail is the linearity of the sensor. As with many sensors, as you get towards the extremities of the dynamic range, the linearity um, um, it becomes less linear, uh, the response flattens, and, uh, and of course that affects our measurements. Now one way of addressing that is to use the flux gate sensor in a feedback loop that drives a current that offsets the actual, um, um, the actual field, the external field. So the sensor is always measuring something around zero, exactly in its linear region, and the actual measurement is what the uh, current source is driving to offset the, uh, the external field. We also need to optimize the operating frequency of, of the flux gate, the rate at which we traverse this hysteresis loop. If we choose a very high frequency, we're favoring the measurement bandwidth of the magnetometer. And if we choose a lower frequency, we are uh, favoring the resolution. So there's a trade-off to be made between bandwidth and resolution, as often. Not just the sensor is important, also the performance of the electronics that you have behind it is important. So we have to carefully design this electronics to manage the noise, to manage the offset, uh, to manage the bandwidth, uh, temperature coefficients, etc., to make sure you have the whole system uh, performing up to par. Finally, as always, it's, it's important to calibrate the instrument uh, properly. Uh, what's especially difficult with flux gates is having a zero field reference because the flux gate is so sensitive um, at zero fields. Okay, now that was a very, very brief introduction to flux gate technology. Uh, I hope it has whetted your appetite to, uh, to, to know some more, and uh, I thank you for listening.